Hey, today we're gonna build this box with the Marine Corps logo engraved in the lid. This is not unlike the other box that I built, but we've got miter joints here instead of the box joints. That allows for us to continue the grain all the way around and make it match. And no shot glasses. When I make these boxes, I do the lid first because the size of the box depends on the lid. Here, like the other one, I'm going to engrave the USMC logo in there. This is all sped up. This is about a three minute process, took like 12 seconds. Next process is like 49 seconds and we sped that up to about six seconds. So after the letters are cut out, I did the next process, which actually took like three and a half minutes, but we sped that up too. Had a little difficulty setting the Z height, but after a few passes, we got it dialed in. And proceeded to do the fine detail work with the 60 degree engraving bit. got to appreciate the accuracy and the detail of a CNC. This is one hundredth of an inch deep. Once I was certain of my lid dimensions, I cut the parts for the side. Laid them out to make sure that the grain was all going in the same direction and matched. And then cut them out on my miter saw, put 45 degree miters on each piece. Here I went ahead and since I don't have a bandsaw, I have to do my resawing on a table saw. And I cut these as a book match pair, glued them together, and then put them through the sander and used them as my bottom. My paper towel trick is to keep the glue from sticking to the wood so I can get this thing unclamped when we're all done. Put a quarter inch dado on the bottom to take the bottom when this thing all goes together. Now if you don't have one of these sanders yet, you gotta get one. Sander makes me look like a genius make super smooth parts. It's really accurate. I use calipers to get my exact thickness. Now, I thought I invented this technique. I've been doing this for years, and then I see other guys on YouTube doing the same thing. Nevertheless, this works. I like using it for miter joints, whether it's on cabinets or building small boxes. Just a little dab of glue in the bottom. I don't want the bottom rattling, but I don't want it so tight that when it expands and contracts, it'll blow my box apart. Little tender touch, wrap it all around, tape it off, put some slight pressure with some clamps just to hold it to make the joints nice and tight. Yeah, that's some bad camera angle for the round over that I did. Then some light sanding. Using a sanding sponge, you know, we don't want to take away the fine detail. Just a little bit of stain in here. I pull the stain so that it sets down in the detail and just wipe it out real light so that my letters will stand out. And, as always, a little bit of sanding. When I want to do finer roundovers, I just use a technique here. I just flatten out my orbital and roll over the edge. Gives a nice, easy roundover. Now I do a little back climb cut when I dado the edge of the lid. That way I don't get blowout. And when I do long grain, I just feed it straight through. And there's the recess, and the lid fits tight. Use the same little roundover technique 
on these small edges where you can't get a router in. And some more stain. Then, of course, you gotta brand it. And a coat of satin lacquer to finish it off. This was a requested build by my sister in law for my brother in law. Ray was good enough to serve in Vietnam in the Marine Corps. This box is for you, Ray. So if you like what we do here at the shop, you know, don't even subscribe. Just watch all our other videos. We'd appreciate it. Talk to you soon.